Welcome to In 5 Minutes. The agenda of this clip is to give you a basic idea of why do we need to study zero NMOS circuits, which are also termed as ratiologic circuits or ratiologic families, and also see some circuits like zero NMOS inverter, zero NMOS NAND, so on and so forth, and see how to draw their schematics. So before we get started, we need to understand that what are the drawbacks of static CMOS circuits, which we already studied. We studied a static CMOS inverter, NAND, NOR, so on and so forth. So we need to understand what were the drawbacks of that circuit. What is the drawback of a static CMOS inverter? Let's get started with that. So if we understand or if we can recollect, we'll understand that for a static CMOS inverter, where the expression was y equal to a bar, we used two total transistors in our circuit. If I had to draw y equal to ab the whole bar which is nothing but an AND, we understood that we need to have pull down circuits of a and b. We saw how to do this, it was pretty simple. And our pull up circuit of two more PMOSs. Now what's going to happen here is, if you remember or if you want to recollect, you can refer to the clip on symmetric inverters. What's going to happen is we know that the mobility of electrons is more than mobility of holes and that ratio is somewhere around 2 to 3 times of mu p. So what's happening is my NMOS transistors are fast and my PMOS are slow. In order to make PMOS faster and having the same speed as that of NMOS, what we need to do is we need to size our PMOS or we need to increase our W by L of PMOS. Don't get confused. There's a clip on symmetric CMOS inverter and we have showed there how to make your PMOS fast or as comparable speed as that of NMOS and for that how do you need to increase the W by L of your PMOS transistor. So this being slow and this being fast, you want to make both of them equal. If you want to make both of them equal, very very simple increase the W by L of the slow transistor. Now if we increase the W by L of PMOS, what's going to happen is it will occupy a lot of area. And any which ways PMOSs are slow and in order to make them fast it occupies more area. So we come to a new logic family and that is nothing but zero and MOS circuits. Let's understand the basic diagram first. What does this circuit do? So the basic diagram of the circuit is nothing but have only one PMOS in your circuit and ensure that that PMOS is always on. Don't get confused. We'll quickly understand what does that mean. This is my Vout. Always remember that PMOS is connected as a pull-up network and it's connected between VDD and ground. And this is nothing but my NMOS logic or pull-down circuits, which can have as many inputs as you want, which can have as many outputs as you want. And this is connected to ground. So what we are going to do is, in any circuit which we are going to make, suppose let's take an example of pseudo NMOS inverter. What we are going to do is, we are going to have an NMOS transistor similar to the way we had it for a static CMOS inverter. You remember the static CMOS inverter? We connected like this and we connected both the inputs. This was termed as output, this was termed as input. So the pull down circuit will remain the same in zero and MOS as well. And we call this terminal as V out. And this will be nothing but my V in. But now the pull up circuit will be common to all the zero and MOS circuits. And that's nothing but just a PMOS whose input is grounded. And this is nothing but VDD. We'll go into the details of the circuit in a minute. Before that, let's understand a zero and MOS NAND and NOR as well. 